Hey, this is Tim Jones, creator of the Sour Grapes comic strip, and you're listening to the Geek World All-Stars Podcast Network. Welcome to the continued podcast adventures of Superhero Speak. But I think many of the people that love this character and that love superheroes in general have used these stories as inspiration to say, you know what, I'm going to do something good in the world. I'm going to make a difference like my hero when I was a kid. That is my fondest memory of it, because when, you, when you're doing comic books, you want them to affect people, right? You want people to care, you want, you want to strike emotions, and I knew that that clone saga was striking a lot of emotions. Can you yep. imagine uh, Pulp Fiction starring Goofy and uh, Mickey Mouse? I can totally <laughs> imagine that. I'm no sure somebody's written that one too. Pounder with cheese in France, Mickey? <laughs> what? <laughs> Boy, ale with cheese, Mickey. Yeah. <laughs> I can totally see. I, I, would, I would watch the hell out of that movie. Yes, I gladly saw, sacrifice that my, my progeny to view of a mighty Marvel beast. <laughs> <laughs> but Neil Adams is somewhere going, hmm, it's, uh, it's my time. <laughs> uh, how do you measure success? Hey, everyone. You're listening to Superhero Speak. And I'm your host, Dave. And John. And JD. Forgot that I'm here. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so we have Eeyore and Mr. Forgetful with us today. Okay. This is going to be fun. How is everyone doing this week? John, how are you? What What's going on in your life? Eh, I'm fine. <laughs> I spent... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I spent, I spent two days over this uh, past week, uh, the, the Labor Day weekend, um, entering stuff into, uh, Aeon Timeline 2 that, that software I was talking about, um, for keeping up the timeline for, for my, uh, for my book. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it, I, I made a joke about it on, on, on Facebook. It's like, you know, that time that you entered in your, 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 infra, your, your plot into a timeline, um, tracker to make sure you weren't writing a book about time travel only to find out you were writing a book about time travel. <laughs> so yeah, I, I have to move a few things around, but it's actually going to help with the book because it, it, uh, it clicks in with Scrivener so that you, your book, can, the, the book chapters and I guess even the um, specific things that happen in the book can actually be linked directly to your timeline. So it should be interesting to see how, how, it helps me get this thing done. Cool. Sounds like you're making progress. I am. I'm actually making progress. I feel good about that. Well, th- there you go. There is something for you to feel good about. Yep, that's the only thing I feel good about. Go ahead. How are you, JD? I'm, Have you I'm, killed me yet? Because I could really use some killing right now. Oh. Yes, I'm. Yes, you are dead. <laughs> well, thank the goddess. It makes you feel great. It makes you feel better. It was gruesome and painful. Oh, oh, beautiful. Awesome. The more gore, the better. And you're married in the story, but, you know. Oh, oh yes. It's just sweet release. <laughs> she lives, you die. Did I at least take a insurance policy out of myself? Sure. That covered werewolf mall? <laughs> yes. It's a Lloyd's of London thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Lloyd's of London werewolf thing. Wolf from, uh, American, signed by American Wolfram Werewolf, Hart, right? An American Werewolf in Lloyds of London. <laughs> <laughs> Episode title. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I'm good, man. I had nothing to complain about. Nothing? I'm sure no. you could complain about something. Um, I have to actually go in for wrestling tomorrow. We can't actually do anything. But to justify my time and you know stay in the, stay in the district's good graces, I have to sit there and watch them weight lift. All masked up and, and whatever. As long wow. as I get paid. That sounds fun. Oh, it's going to be off. <laughs> as long as everybody's social distancing, you're all safe, I guess, you know. Yeah, yeah, sort of whatever. Mm. Uh, I was in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm sorry, you're audience. Welcome. It's catchy. Let's see. How, how can I ruin your mood? So I was, well, I have, you know, we have, we have like, uh, interesting things to talk about this week. But, um, like, I've been busy watching stuff. Stuff for this podcast, stuff for other podcasts, which I'll get into later. Ooh. And um and listening to a bunch of podcasts this week. And there's one that will remain nameless. 
Okay. This is something that a dude like, or a, a dude or a podcast. A, a, a podcast. The podcast okay. will remain nameless. I will say it's not part of the Geek World All Stars podcast network, so it's none of our friends in there. Um, but I've been listening to this show for a while, and they were talking not too long ago about. You know, when the whole COVID thing happened or everything got shut down, um, like, oh, this is, this is the death of theaters. And, you know, they were kind of like, oh yeah, we, I saw theaters dying anyway. This is just a good push in the right direction. Um, blah, blah, blah. Right. I'm like, okay, that's weird. Like, I don't fully agree with that, but okay. If you think that's the future and then movies started being released on demand that were supposed to be in the theater. And most particularly, they were talking about Milan, and they're really PO'd that they're charging premiums for these movies. You know, 30 bucks for Milan and 20 bucks for, uh, let's say Bill and Ted and, uh, you know, all the other movies that were, that have been released like this, you know, and I'm sitting there going, what do they think? <laughs> what do they think was going to happen? You know, apparently they, they didn't take the profit motion and module into consideration. Right. Like one of them had said something about like, oh, well, you know, I, I, I can envision like, you know, we have these subscription services like Netflix and and Prime Video and blah, 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 that maybe AMC does a subscription service that I do. But, you know, and it lets you just watch movies at home. And I'm like, yeah, but eight bucks a month for a family of four is not going to because right? if you have a subscription at home, you only need one for your family. Like. That's not going to cover the cost to make these three hundred million dollar movies you like. No, no. And why would you? No, not at all. <clears throat> and why would? Like, it's going to be impossible for AMC to get in that space because you're basically saying AMC needs to change their entire business model right. to becoming a streaming service. They don't have the infrastructure. That's a five year undertaking. Mm -hmm. It might not be long term. It might not be a horrible move for them. I don't know how they fit themselves into that space, but we're we're so far beyond that at the moment oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. um mulan's got a lot of big a lot bigger problems than just for 30 dollars <laughs> at this point yeah and i understand some of the complaints because like there were rumors that it was going to be released in december for free you know um oh it's it's not just that it's it's the fact that disney in the end credits disney's thanking organizations that are helping with the human rights abuses with the Uyghurs in the Xinjiang province, uh, province where it was filmed. Oh wow! Well, I mean, I, I I don't want to get into all of that, but I'm so I, well. It's I mean, it's a, it's a thing. People are are really 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 pissed. So I'm just talking about the distribution model, <laughs> which I think the mistake, in my opinion, is they they're com trying to completely control it. So it's just on Disney Plus, you know, as opposed to like I mean, I know in other countries it's in theaters, but like they could have put it on prime or red box or any of those other services you know well in other countries they don't have the infection rate that the u.s does it's true so so like we we shot ourselves in the foot but i mean the 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 other problem is that they decided to charge people an extra 30 bucks on top of their uh, monthly rate which is just you know kind of ridiculous for a remake of of uh, an actual good movie Again, I don't think it's ridiculous because if it had been gone in the theater and a family of three people want to see it, you know, that's 30 bucks, that's 30 bucks. Like, it's Let, not let's like, just say if they had done a better job and the reviews are better, it would it might have been worth the 30 bucks for well, a family. But that's the thing, though. This is the perfect time to experiment because, like, it's not like they spent a ton of money on this Mulan remake. They're, they do these movies because they're safe. Right. Right. And it's like this is a great time for them to go. Let's see if this works. Because we got no other choice right now. So if it doesn't, you know, who cares? It's not like they had a lot invested in the Mulan remake. No, you know, this they, is true. They didn't. I mean, it's, it's a good time to do some corporate experimentation. Right. And, and, I, and they I, saved honest, them. Go ahead. <laughs> I honestly believe that's exactly what we're seeing. It's like um, quietly put new mutants in the theater because they have to because of contracts. But let's see how many people are going to the theaters right now. Okay, now we got Mulan where people have to pay a premium to see it on our service. Let's see how many people do that. You know, now they can gauge, okay, Black Widow, how how do we handle this? You know? Mm. Yeah. They're figuring out to say, we're not the first people to say we've been in unprecedented times. Right. You know, this is what we're doing. We're all trying to figure out 
how to move forward. But I mean, what struck me about their conversation is this: like, it seems like people don't understand the concept of the reason they want to make the money is so they can continue making these giant movies that cost three hundred million dollars. See, and that's the thing: is like, dude, you guys know where I fall in the political spectrum, but I understand that capitalism it's just the way it is. You have to, you have to feed it. Like right. you have to feed your company or else the company doesn't exist anymore. Like no one's getting grants to make $300 million movies. No, not at you all. You have to, you got to pay for them. And like, this is how, this is how they get paid for is you got to go see them. Like I get it. It sucks. We live in a, this is a problem too. These subscription models is they've actually devalued what entertainment costs. You know what I'm saying? Like the mm-hmm. value of entertainment. So, now we expect everything to be at basically nothing, right? Even new properties. Well, they, new yeah, but that, well, there's a, there's a problem though. It's like they're better. They're, the reason why we keep having to feed it is because they're making these big blockbusters, but they're doing, they're, they're doing remakes and sequels and yeah. like nothing really new. No. And I'm sure there's like good new stuff out there that probably could be done on shoestrings. Of course, sir. Yeah. Well, the stuff there's good stuff that is being done on shoestrings. Disney is not in the Disney is not in the business of doing shoestrings. Well, true, but but again, if you think about like like the reason why End say you know Avengers Endgame and and Infinity War cost so much wasn't technically like it, it was it was it was more because they had so many um, stars to yeah. you know, stars it, who stars who command a, a premium, right. So oh, that, that drives up because the technology, because the technology, the cost of the technology is going down. I mean, right. But as as technology go, <laughs> funny part of this is a nice little economic lesson. Mm. Just because the cost and means of production go down doesn't mean the prices are going to. Right. Like budgets yeah. will continue to inflate. Like they'll just look for more opportunities to line either the stars, the pockets of the stars, which is fine. It's still star driven industry or B, you know, everyone makes a little bit more, you know, including the bean counters. So, I mean, that's just the way it goes. Right. Got to gotta pay to see movies. Or movies don't get made. Very true. And that's, and that's you know, that's the whole thing. And it's funny, John, because you had talked about, oh, on top of paying the subscription service. And, like, I can understand why people are kind of ticked about that. But at the same time, like, they were making a joke like, oh, you know, you're paying 30 bucks to own it. But, you know, you got to keep paying that $8 a month to keep it. And it's like. Right. Exactly. But the $8. True. But the eight dollars a month gives you access to everything Disney's ever made. So yeah, no, they. <laughs> so it's funny in the pro wrestling space, this uh, independent company just got purchased by the WWE, right? And they had their own streaming platform, and they're they're part of like a streaming platform collective. We'll, we'll we'll call it that. Well, now if you log onto the collective, shows that you bought six, seven, eight years ago are gone. So even if you bought them because the rights to those shows were sold to another company, your purchase is nothing. Right. And to be quite frank, that eight, that's right. You're renting $8 a month. You're renting the space to watch your movie. If Disney Plus goes away, those movies go away too. You know, right. it but sucks, it's, but you're, you're basically, be, you're basically betting that, that Disney will always be accruing stuff, not ever, you know, uh, like licensing stuff out, you know, in such a way that they can't have it. Well, you only own these things for as long as streaming platforms are a thing. Like there will be another evolution, right? Mm. No, like you still own your VHSs or DVDs. Like those are hard copy mediums. But these digital things, like, well, even if you own a VHS, if you don't own a VHS player, what good is it? You know what I'm right. saying? Like you can own a bunch of ones and zeros, but without the means with which to play it, what do you really own? See, that's exactly. why I have. All, that's why I have all blue. That's why I still buy Blu-rays and then I rip them onto a hard drive. And then what happens when they stop making Blu-ray players? I t- I ripped it onto a hard drive. And then what happens when that hard drive dies? Or nothing uh, takes a USB anymore. You know what I'm saying? Well, like it's everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, you have to. It, it's a it's it's a maintenance cost to to like you know if the video format goes out of out of favor and you you have to convert it to a different video format. But you know I have I have a backup system and all that, so See, I'm I'm no problem. But that but not everybody nobody else can do that except geeks like me. So it's you know you're you're right like. Yeah, you know, you had records. They went out of favor. They're back in now somehow. Um, but so, you know, oh, VHS. Cool. Yeah, because so VHS. Hipsters. Well, because it, it, they still records still sound better than like the discs well, yeah. these days. Correct. But but yeah, you're right. Like um, the original. That ain't gonna DVD happen. That ain't gonna happen uh, for VHS. Let's be real. No yeah. one's gonna have like a 
uh, there won't be a VHS wave. People go, oh, man, remember <laughs> listening to shitty audio and watching crappy video? <laughs> and, and, waiting, and waiting to fast forward. <laughs> same, right, same, thing like, with, same thing with cassettes. There's not going to be a – tracking. Yeah, exactly. No one goes, man, the A-track. That was a thing. Yeah, uh, you remember but, when remember when you had it in your Walkman and it would break on you and you had to go yeah. buy the album again? Or, or it ate, like you're the, or ate the tip. Yeah, ate the tape. But yeah, but Laserdisc is a good example, and so is Betamax. And so it, it's it's all the same thing. It's like you said, they, you know, as this stuff goes out of sync, you know, it's either you find a way to transfer your ones and zeros, um, you know, the 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 they're they're banking on convenience. You know, the convenience of being able to just log in and see whatever you've gotten. But, sure. you know, but it's, it, the market is already showing that this, that you can get burned pretty easily by it with all the ultraviolet, um, codes that you used to get with the, with the Blu-rays. And then that they, that service went out of business and you had to transfer everything and people who didn't get the notice just lost their entire libraries. It's all I think, bullshit. I think it's, it's yeah. I, I think the problem is, you know, the idea of, marketing as oh you're paying thirty dollars but you own it it's like you can watch it whenever you want it's like no you're paying thirty dollars for early access for premiere yeah. access to see it you're paying a premium to see the movie first you know mm -hmm. and that's really the way you look at it like it's just like you're paid the movie tickets to go to the theater and see the movie first before it comes out on blu-ray dvd or whatever and it could be a losing it could be a losing proposition like um we all got bill and ted that's 20 bucks but who know, I don't I can't tell you how Mulan is doing on Disney Plus. I don't think they don't know release if the ever, numbers. Yeah, I was saying I don't mm. know if they'll ever release those numbers, but we'll we'll know by how frequently Disney does this. Exactly. That'll that'll be the, the answer to it. And if if they keep doing this, that means people are buying, and that's just the new way we have to. My mom always told me that back in like the the sixties when they started talking about cable, people freaked out about the idea of having to pay for TV. Uh huh. You know, and look what happened. Cable became do you remember Cable. when VCRs came uh, no, became a good. thing? Uh, I do. Um, I was, I'm younger than you guys. Sorry. Mo movie companies <laughs> and movie theaters freaked out that uh, no one's going to go to the movies anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh you know? yeah, they were they were cracking down on mom and pop uh, video stores, and then that's when you know they started to get the big chains like Blockbuster, which just ate all the mom and pop shops, and then they got eaten by by basically Redbox and Netflix by a new format a more convenient thing exactly mm -hmm. that's that's what happens that's it's called progress that's how the world works um unfortunately and, and progress comes with capital it yes. sucks it's the way it goes but i mean like just the way it is man so we've got a review to go and we should like get going here like how about how about this i mean we, we spent this we could skip over over the social media madness and yeah we, we, in fact I, nah, I i think that's a great idea no nah, yeah. nope 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 not gonna happen I only t uh, I only have a couple here, and I think the one we we should kind of address. I don't know. Uh, um, I don't like it. So the f the first one was speaking of social media madness. Uh, the first one, of course, we talked about the new mutants snuck into the theaters uh, last week. Um, some reviewers refused to review it; others hated it. Um, Has and anyone given it a good review? Has anyone heard? Hey, I like New Mutants. Anybody? No, 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 oh, man. no. Um, I, 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 what part of the problem is you know, a lot of people don't want to go out to a movie theater to see it. We did that. We did that show last week. Know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Monkey C, uh, retweeted us and said, could they please just get an X-Men movie right for once? Um, that would be a no. Well, except that Disney's guys. So maybe yes. So that was my question. Do you think any X-Men movies were done right? Yeah, like, uh, at first class is really good. X Men Two is pretty good. Um, uh, Days of Future Past is really good. Yeah, it was okay. No, that's the really first, good. First class, first... I liked first class better than I liked that one. No, I like I like Days of Future Past better because it had Logan. You know, well, of course, but it was better. Like, it's a good. Those are good movies. But it, that's pretty much it. Yeah, Logan. Logan, Logan was good. Yeah, Logan. Lo Logan. Logan was. That Logan was more of a, a what is it? Logan was like a a good story. It wasn't yeah. just a, it wasn't yeah. just an X. -Men. But it's not. I, I it was a good movie. It was a very good movie. But it wasn't an X Men story. Hmm. It's an but, X Men adaptation. Like yeah. it's it's what 
it's what we don't see enough in movies, and we shouldn't, quite frankly, see this all the time in movies, is where you take the idea and you're able to do something that they sh- shouldn't be done. The only reason they could do a movie like Logan is because they had done so much with that universe. Right. You know? It was a great bookend. Right. No, I as agree. Nor the Phoenix one. The, the next good one that we see, though, will be, um, you know, Logan and Deadpool. Possibly. So, yeah. so, so the next, of course, we had, uh, we talked about Civil War last week, um, and JVD at Villains Demand said, "Good, po- good podcast themselves." Yes, you guys were talking about the terrible Marvel event after House of M. Do you think Annihilation is bad too? Uh, it was coming out of the same time as Civil War and was overshadowed. I think it's a far better series. To which, huh? uh, what were you gonna say? Well, I don't know that one, so. Uh, well, a lot fortunately, of- someone responded to that. It was ready. Yeah, uh, um, um, someone named JD. Uh, I can't read the last name. Um, <laughs> Oliva. <laughs> Annihilation was amazing. Edited by my friend and mentor at Comics Andy Experience, Sh- Andy Schmidt. Uh, but it was a side. Thing. It was a side thing like Planet Hulk, which was also way better. This. Well, that was a typo. The last part. Um, oh, okay. That was predictive text on the phone that actually got that one. Yeah, Planet Hulk's, or I'm sorry, Annihilation was uh, the side story going on during Civil War, and it's got a much, for being a large scale space story, it's um, it's it doesn't take the entire line over. And in fact, most of the Annihilation books were self contained and weren't other titles at the time. Like Annihilation books were were miniseries that were launched for that specific miniseries. Right. The the most successful of which became the Guardians of the Galaxy, the ones that we know. Yes. Uh, which goes to the Stratosphere replied, the problem with Planet Hulk is that it's so good, but it led to, it led to World War Hulk, which was just massive trash. I love awesome. PH, but it's impossible for me to consider it without thinking of the wet fart that followed. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I love, I love these guys. Uh, You're good. Uh, that, that same JD guy replied again, yeah, World War Hulk wasn't good. Line-wide crossover suck. Yes. Uh, JVD then replied, I enjoyed the X-Men and Ghost Rider tie-ins with World War Hulk. Huh. I didn't read either of those, so I'll just, I'll take his word for it. Yeah, I didn't either because, um, I was one of those that was excited about World War Hulk because I did enjoy Planet Hulk, and I was like, this is garbage. <laughs> like, two, two, Two ep- uh, episodes, two issues in. I was just, I was done. Um, and then Richard G said, "I'm with you on that point. Annihilation brought an un- a, a unification to the world and of characters. I liked it. I did not get every book though. It was good to see the characters somewhat united. So um, good time. So yeah, see, so 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 our people who listen to us agreed with uh, a lot of what you had to say, JD." Sometimes I'm right. Sometimes you're right. Hmm. Sometimes people disagree. And sometimes people disagree. So we'll, we'll, we'll I, I don't know. Should, I guess we should just leave his name out of it. No, no. Let's leave his name out of it because he sent, he didn't do it publicly. He yeah. sent an email. So, no, so it's just, yeah. So I know you're, we, we know you're listening. Um, we appreciate the download, by the by. We appreciate the download. We're going to say, in the future, if you have a comment about something said on the show, don't DM us, don't email us. Tell us on Twitter directly, you know, so that we literally do a gimmick about it. Exactly. It's called social media madness and we, our tagline, well, our tagline used to be join the conversation. Um, and that's what I'm trying to get back to with social media madness. So, um, yeah, so I'm not going to, I'm not even going to get into the whole thing. Basically, he just wasn't happy with what you had to say about the Snyder cut. And it wasn't, it wasn't that it, that I said the Snyder cut was bad. This is what I find the craziest thing. It wasn't that I said the Snyder cut was bad or the justice league sucked or, you know, the million things that I have said about that. It's that I disputed with the idea that he wouldn't use any of Whedon's footage. Yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't understand the, the hatred for that. I mean, I will say that if he's got four hours of footage versus uh, the, I think the theatrical cut was slightly over two hours. He there probably doesn't need to use Whedon footage, but I don't know. Who knows? You know, there could be the same exact shot they both did, and the lighting's better in the Whedon one. 
What do you do yeah. then? Use a crappier he, looking shot? No, you use it. He can. I mean, I get what he's doing. He's promoting. You know, hey, we're not going to use any of that. It's all mine. I get it. That's you know, he's working a gimmick. Yes. You know, he might not. He might not even know what's his and what's theirs at this point. To be honest, well, he was shot years ago. That is so. That's probably true. I could definitely see that. Like him looking at a clip and going, I don't. I, did I shoot this? I don't remember. Right. And his, and Which his is, assistant going, yeah, boss. Yeah, yeah, that was you, boss. It's entirely possible. We don't know. We don't know what's going on in there. These people, like what, uh, okay. what I find funny is that the amount of vitriol this movie or, you know, movement, what this point we'll call it, gets. It's a movie, man. That's all it is. It's not a religion. We're not talking about the Book of Mormon, either the religious text or the play. <laughs> I'm talking about a bad movie, so feel free to email me anytime. But you know, just let's do it on social media. Yes, yes, and uh, and and we'll have fun. And we have plenty of fr- friends and fans on Twitter that would like to join in, and I'm sure give their opinion, and then we can all share it on the show and be happy. I've had it together. All right. Well, on that note. If you'd like to learn the proper way to be part of social media madness, here's our good friend D-Square to tell you more. Enjoying the show? Want to be part of social media madness? Make sure you are following SuperheroSpeak.com where you can find all of the show's social media links at the top of the page. While you're there, you can check out old episodes of the podcast as well as some other great content. Check the site often because we are posting some great comic reviews as well as comic book and movie news content every day. Make sure and follow us on Twitter, at Superhero Speak. And while you're there, check out the rest of the Geek World All-Stars Podcast Network. You can follow them at stars underscore geek. The Geek World All-Star Podcast Network include great programs such as the Pop Prison Power Podcast, Colt 45, So Wizard, Fans on Patrol, The Gorilla Brain Podcast, and of course, Superhero Speak. Search for hashtag GWAllStars. You will not be disappointed. Now, it's back to Dave and the boys on Superhero Speak. Thank you, Don, and as always, don't forget to check out the House of Deep Podcast, available on YouTube and wherever podcasts are available. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. After these messages, we'll be right back. All right. So we don't have much news to talk about, um, but uh, we got a couple things here. So you guys remember a couple weeks ago, there was a huge event on the Internet called DC Fandom, and it gave us this huge amount of news to talk about on the show. Vaguely. <laughs> well, apparently it was such a freaking success. They're doing it again. Like I, when I first saw this, I thought they were just restreaming the first DC fandom. Like, no, they, they've got more content and it's going to be streaming this weekend, Saturday, the 12th, um, on this, at the same website again, dcfandom.com. I'm kind of ticked off because I have a fan obligation on the 12th so i can't watch the stuff live again but uh um what do you guys think of this you think this is cool and is this going to be the future of how dc announces stuff if they've got even better stuff to announce uh, i mean i don't know what 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 they haven't they covered right um although they could do something surprising who knows well yeah I, I wonder if they're doing this to build fandom into a property of its own so that when we can have people again at things, we can actually have a physical fandom. Now what happens to the Comic Cons then? Like they care. It'll be mm. their own Comic Con. Right. They don't I mean like they I mean this is this is again the world we live in where you know it's uh people want to control all aspects of the media. Why not have your why participate in Comic Con and make someone else money when I mean, you could do your own thing and make you all the money? If if they think it's bad now with with streaming and people trying to choose which ones they're going to uh, they're, they're they're going to pay for for a couple of bucks a month, I I think they better think twice about thinking oh Marvel have theirs and DC will have theirs and I mean how much do we spend on Dave we we spent like maybe three thousand dollars on New York Comic Con alone and I think of being like it 
actually more than that, like maybe four grand. But that's the choice. Of the, that's the choice of the consumer. You know, it's not on to DC to ask them not to spend, you know, not to spend money on Warner stuff. Well, and that's yeah, exactly. And yeah, it's a, it's I don't know. It seems like a silly argument because there's so many conventions now anyway, and one's right, pop up, but you go to a con- guy. But you go to a convention, you get you get to see you know from from all different vendors, right? If if you have to start choosing between um, you know, a DC or a Comic Con or a Marvel Con, where you're, well, you're one Marvel, of them's going to lose out. Marvel, yes. are, Marvel already threw the the first punch mm-hmm. because they didn't show up one year at Comic Con because they went to uh, D three instead, Disney's and, uh, convention. And DC's been doing this for years with the reprop the, the repop shows by not putting out booths. Like this is. This is not something that started with the COVID. This is something that's been in the making for quite some time. You know, yeah. this is just they've been wanting to get out of these things for years. And to be quite honest, that's actually might be better for Comic Cons in general. You know, yeah. they want to focus more on like the comic, the, the comic aspect of it, the business aspect of it. Yeah, you I know? think it was it was different when it was just Comic Con, you know, and then there was I mean, there was big Apple Con for years in New York and now it's New York Comic Con. But, you know, like. That's all the big two had to worry about, you know. Now there's Emerald Comic Con, Comapalooza, um, C2E2. C2E2, thank you. Uh, like, you know, and Wizards trying a thousand cons and dying, but that's all another story. Um, yeah. it's, it, you know, uh, but now Reed wants to do, or started up the, the one in Philly here, um, Keystone Comic Con, and then, you know, so it's just like, I'm sure the the publishers are like it costs us money to send to, to set up a booth at all these cons, sends out, and then you know make announcements at San Diego, but then try to make announcements at New York, and then try to make announcements at here. You know, I get it. They want to control. They want to have control over when their messages comes out, not based on the con season. Yeah, and then here's the thing too: is what haven't they announced at D23 or at DC Fandom? Mm. Not much about comics. And well, if you look at the schedule for this one, it's mainly focused on the comics and the TV shows because they didn't do a lot about the TV shows at the last one. Right. There's so one. there's lots of space. I mean, like, what? If, here's a crazy. What if we kept Comic Con being about comic books? <gasps> Bite your tongue. I did during dinner. It really hurts. <laughs> you know, so I mean, like, that, what are we gonna get? Armageddon Rebirth. <laughs> Why is she like? I enjoy those pre. I enjoy going to panels. That's my favorite part about going mm-hmm. to comic book conventions. Like I hate sitting in like the big, you know, sweaty convention halls where it's everyone's doing, everyone's lined up to get like a preview of a movie. I'd much rather listen to writers talk about their craft or like listen oh, yeah. to promote what kind of what's next on the docket. Which we don't. Those aren't important anymore. Like if 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 the the media the multimedia properties go somewhere else, then it can be about comics again. I'm I'm fine with this. No, I, yeah, I totally agree. I don't. I, I just, but doesn't doesn't that lessen the draw to the comic cons, right? Yeah. I mean, if you go, goes, if you go mm-hmm. to Comic Con, you should like comic book. And the cops well, are just still going to go because they like that this is what they do, you know. Oh yeah, no, like uh, a great Philly Comic Con is gonna is gonna continue to get larger because they're doing very well. And Keystone, well, Keystone might get hurt because they they bring in a lot of talent and. If the talent is all going to be at like DC and Marvel now, um. I think yeah, I think what you're going to have is if if Warner Brothers and Disney starts going, you know, we want to control the media message. We don't want to worry about the cons to announce them. Um, you're still going to get the smaller studios. You're still going to get the convention trying to grab one. I mean, you know, things that are nerd adjacent, you know, but it's not going to attract as many people. Mm. Um, and but yeah, I mean, it should be about the comic books. I I I fully agree. Like I I I thought cons were dying when I don't know, probably me about ten years ago, nine years ago. I'm at a convention and there's these guys walking around with beers and like they're making fun of some of the cosplayers, you know. And then they're looking at they're looking at someone's art and going, I could draw that. And I'm like, you are not a fan. Like yeah, you know. They don't belong at that you show. You don't belong here. Like, this is the problem. This is what I, I've complained about this before. I've written stuff on the website about it. It's like, there is an infestation of non-fans at convention, you know? Um, you're talking about the ones that go and spend 200 bucks to go get, you know, go get in the autograph 
and photograph lines. Or? Not even, not even that. Like because at least you're a fan of that person. These are people that are just like they're just there to hang out because it seems like the in thing to do. Or they're there to check out oh. the the, 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 uh, the hot TV cosplayers. And stuff. Oh, there's guys that there's that too. Like Please. I don't, I don't like gatekeeping, but I think there's a lot of aspects that you have a point with. Like I think there are people that, that go to these shows now. Mm-hmm. More because it's a thing to do, and I'm not not saying the cosplayers are things like that, but I mean like if you go to a comic con, you don't check out Artist Alley, if you don't, you know, go to chat like look at some booths, you know, what are you doing there? Yeah, uh, you get you get that you get that more at the like the Wizard Worlds. That's what I'm talking or about. The, yeah, because because New York Comic Con, you you don't get that. It's too expensive for right. some no. some bras right. to, yeah, to go in with some brewskis, you know. That's that's the thing. The tent pole conventions like new york and san diego you don't get that because it's too expensive and they sell out too quickly by nerds anyway uh, mm. but but yes no but at the smaller conventions you every once in a while you run into these guys it's just like why are you here you know you're you're a dude bro that's just here because it seems like a cool thing to do on a saturday i don't know um yeah no and it's disturbing especially when i would work conventions and i'd see these guys walking around and you know I saw saw him making fun of a, a cosplayer once, and I'm like, "Are you serious?" You know. These days, you get thrown out for that shit, and and rightly so. It, you do if if they catch you. So, mm. but yeah, so so yeah, it's it's interesting to see where it's going. Um, yeah, I'm gonna miss it though, unfortunately. But for those listening, make sure you check it out. There's gonna be a lot of cool uh, panels, I think, at this one. If you're into comics and you like Legends Tomorrow and you want to know what's going on with Batwoman, um. All right. Speaking of DC and movies, um, of course, we got that at the last DC fandom. We got that great first look at the Batman. And and then we had got an announcement. We were all excited that they were starting filming up again for the movie. <laughs> and yep. then Robert Pattinson, the Batman himself, who you think would have a bat antidote, has contracted COVID-19. Uh, who, who knew? Who knew uh, that vampires could get COVID nineteen? <laughs> well, he stopped sparkling, mm. um, coughing up blood. So of course <laughs> they 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 shut down production again. Uh, I've, they have to wait, you know, until he can test uh, negative, as the case may be. Um, it, 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 he, has, he has to wait ten days or something because of the rules in in England or something like that. Yeah, um, a full moon, I think, too. <laughs> yeah, a full moon. He needs a blood <laughs> sacrifice. I, I don't yeah. know. It's just a whole whole crazy thing, especially in England. Um where do you think he's in Wales? I mean, <laughs> it's like <laughs> blood sacrifice. So, yeah, um yeah, yeah, yeah. But So, you I think this will you think this will delay the movie even later? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But not by much, maybe a month. Well, because the thing is, if he got it, did he give it to other people there and then assume yes? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Assume yes, assume, we know anything. Exactly, that's the whole thing. You have to assume yes, because I know, like here in the states, if you work at a company and uh, and you you test positive, like everyone that you work with has to te- get tested as well. Well, it's, here's here's the thing about film production. My cousin, um, who co-hosts the Story Builder podcast with me, um, he works <laughs> as an assistant director. Um, and they're back to work. I, I, he didn't tell, I forget what he's working on now. Uh, maybe, uh, I'm, I forget what he's working on, but they have to get COVID tested twice a week. Okay. Makes sense. So, I mean, like they're on top of it. Like, and because again, there's so much money being spent on these things. Right. So there's a good chance that whoever would have gotten it has already tested positive or they're going to catch them soon because I'm sure just because production shut down doesn't mean they've stopped testing these people. Which means. That if you're having problems getting a COVID test, you know it's because of Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> They're paying for those things, man. <laughs> well, the other the other problem is that I heard that insurance companies are starting to um, not cover COVID for pr- big productions because it's too expensive and and it's almost guaranteed to happen <laughs> because yeah. of the way things have been going. It's gonna be big money. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Well, moving on to a little bit of happier news. <laughs> Uh, they announced the release date or the, you know, for the first episode of Mandalorian season two. We could really use some baby Yoda right now. It's, uh, it'll be October 30th of this year. And of course, they also released a couple production stills, uh, for the new season. And, um, yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait. Uh, of course, he's still in 
in this in the pictures he's still in the same armor as he was in the end of season one uh you know the whole silver and gray look i thought was this cool is, this is the way it's the way <laughs> um i have been rick rolled to a friend of mine who is a huge star wars fan posted this link it's like oh f- uh uh, teaser preview for season two and i knew that they were re- announcing the date so i'm like oh cool i click on it H- have either of you seen this video no it starts off with a uh a, an image of the sarlacc pit oh jeez. And, and then you and see then like goes... then you see like a desert uh uh thing and then a foot steps down and it's boba fett's foot and then it pulls away and you see him walking away in the distance and then you see slave one leaving a a, a planet and then it of course it Rick rolls you with <laughs> uh, poor Rick Ashley. Uh, I was so PO'd, but I am excited. Well, to see we all too. knew that Rick Ashley was in the armor for Boba Fett, right? Like he is Boba Fett. <laughs> well, it's funny because someone else like then like two days later released uh, Rick Ashley found dead at age 54. And, you know, it's the same thing. And I'm like. When this poor man actually does pass away, no one's going to click on the articles. No one's going to believe it. That's a step too far. I feel now I feel bad. Yes, exactly. You've rickrolled people, haven't you? Me? Oh, plenty of times. Uh, Okay, okay. All right. Just making sure. Who who hasn't? Not me. It's a good gag, but it's a good gag. (laughs) Yeah, true. Anyway, you guys excited? Are you excited for season two, JD? Oh, yeah, of course. There's not much coming on right now TV-wise, so... Whatever, whatever they can throw our way, I'm oh, fired well, up. Well, speaking know? of new TV, they released The Boys season two, right? Um, yeah, yeah, they did. I haven't gotten to it yet, but but here's the thing: they only released three episodes, and I don't remember them doing that. I thought they released last season. I thought they released them all at once. They did. But the streaming model, the binging model, has changed. Oh, it. Oh, that's what. Yeah, that's the whole thing at this point. It's like no, no more binging for you. Oh, it's because they they. That I, I'm guessing that's because now that there are so many streaming services, they I, know that people will sign up for one month, watch something, and then and then kill it. And I, so, I, no. I get that, and I understand that, and like I get that with people doing that with Netflix and um, uh, Disney Plus and and some of these other services. But like I never signed up for Amazon Prime for the video. I actually signed up for it to, for to get free Amazon Prime delivery, you know, like that's what everybody did in the beginning. And mm-hmm. and I just it's like I just get the yearly subscription and just auto renews at the end of the year every year, so I don't even think about it. So like that just ticks me off to do this to me because it's like you know I've been a loyal customer for years. I'm not gonna jump ship after a month of watching this. So screw you. Well, that's because it. Jerks like me that are getting ready to get rid of HBO as soon as they finish Lovecraft County. Country. I always do that. Bastard. Put more stuff on your network and I'll think about keeping it. Well, that's different. Yeah. That's different. There's lots of stuff on Prime. Amazon's a weird company, man. Don't don't get me started on them. For right. my other business, I can go on for a while. Oh, yeah. No, trust me. For, from the other side, from the um, Amazon Web Services side, they're still a weird company. And their pricing models are all over the freaking place. So. All right. So the last, so then the last weird thing that we're going to talk about before we get to our review, uh, like this Ray Fisher thing just won't go away. Um, it's getting worse. Yes. Yeah, it's getting worse. So like, apparently, like the, the straights are beginning to hear about it. <laughs> the muggles. Yeah. yeah. The muggles. The no, muggles seriously, I'm starting to see it on my feed. I'm, 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 I'm starting to hear it on like on cable news. So yeah, it's starting to it's starting to per, it's starting to penetrate, you know. So apparently, Warner says they had event, they had launched an internal investigation, and um, that Ray Fisher wasn't cooperating with the investigation. And he tweeted out that, or Instagram, whatever, he said that like they called him and he realized that they were just trying to to uh, get him to to stop talking about it. Um, they weren't really doing an investigation and. And that exploded all over social media. And then Jason Momoa has now come out and said he supports Ray Fisher in what's going on. So, um, which is, I think he's one of the first big actors from the movie to come out and say it. Um, so it's getting crazy. Like what happened on this set? I need to know. This is going to make a more interesting movie than the Snyder cut well, when they eventually tell the story. <laughs> I've had bowel movements more interesting than the Snyder cut. <laughs> oh. 
we're, you're JD getting another underscore Oliva at Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> um, keep it there. No, yeah. I, Kevin Smith. You heard Kevin Smith talk about when he was on the Star Wars set. A lot of the crew guys were telling horror stories about working on Justice League. Yeah, like they, like, we didn't. didn't just based on the rumors we've heard, Whedon did not do a very good job taking care of his I, cast and crew on that movie. I, I want to give a a, 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 a a slightly different perspective on this, and I'm not trying to justify anything. What I'm going to say is, is it possible he was brought in and he didn't really want to do it because he could only do so much? It wasn't his vision. I'm sure. So, part of it. so did that just put him in a fail mood the entire time he was working on the movie? Probably. But you got to be a professional. Well, yes, of course you need you to know. be a professional. But I'm just trying to give a, a, a spin on what, an explanation on what happened. But here's the other thing. Whedon himself has yet to come out and say anything about this. Oh, he, which is the best way to be. Yeah. You can't say, like, I'm sure he lawyered up immediately and lawyers well, don't say it, anything. It, it's also a tried and true way of... of um sidestepping this stuff like you just disappear for a while let it blow over because anything you say good or bad will get a reaction and that reaction will feed the bot the feed the beast basically so yeah, yeah. you know if you don't say anything and you, you know no denial no no confirmation no like you know coming out arm swinging or or no apology tour nobody there's no purchase to to keep it going no fuel right yeah well, and the Jason Momoa thing is big because obviously they want to keep working with him. You know, they they yeah, it want gives to... oxygen. It gives oxygen to it. Yes. Something happened. Something happened. Like I wonder what. Um, I did see another video where the guy had speculated, and I don't I don't know how much I believe this. Um, but they're saying that they they think that he's just bitter because apparently Zack Snyder was supposed to do a cyborg solo movie, and you know now that justice league failed that that was been put to the side you don't go you don't go to this route for that it's, yeah that doesn't as i say like that doesn't that theory makes no sense to me because it's like you're just hurting your career doing this right and every a big part of working in the the film machine is that there's probably a hundred fold projects discussed or talked about than there are created right like this is just like every actor and director and writer has been through this. We're like, oh, we're going through with this. But you, will, everyone in Hollywood and outside knows that nothing is real until you're rolling. Yes. And in some cases, that's not even the case. You know, that doesn't even happen. Oh, yeah. We've heard the stories of movies that were just made to be put on a shelf. Or movies like, uh, you know, Lost in La Mancha that get started and they just, you know, kill it. Yeah. So, yeah, no, this isn't because I didn't get my movie and I'm going to ruin my career. Like, yeah. no, something, something else happened. Well, hopefully, eventually, maybe by the time the Snyder Cut comes out, we'll learn the whole story. Um, but that's the news for this week. Now, the moment everyone's been waiting for, we've got a movie review of a new movie, guys. Unbelievable. First one of the year, I think. Mm. Uh, No, Bloodshot was this year. God, oh, that really? feels like that feels like a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> that was that, that, that's an entire pandemic ago. <laughs> For real, I completely. Jeez, uh, an entire pandemic ago. Is that how it we're is. gonna start? Is that how we're gonna start measuring time pre and post pandemic? I feel like I really feel like we've aged a decade in this six months. <laughs> uh, I feel like I've aged thirty years, but that's a whole other story. All right, so the movie. That we all got to see, thanks to John's recommendation from last week, was Bill. Was that John? Good call, John. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> Just, well, because you said you I, saw it and you liked it, and I was like, yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, good. Yeah, we don't praise we're, John enough on the show. Good job, John. Yes, good job, John. We're we're proud uh, of. Please you. don't 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 start now. <laughs> don't, <laughs> we're gonna ruin your brand. <laughs> you, you're you're gonna ruin my. You're gonna ruin my month. Good yeah, job, you're John. my streak for the month. Broken, broken clock and all that jazz. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you better? go. Feel okay. better now. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, 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 2020. <laughs> um, uh, Bill and Ted face the music, starring, of course, Alex Winter and Kenna Reeves. It is the third in the Bill and Ted series, and um, yeah, so so we can get right into it uh, before we. Before we go spoilers, of course, let's go around the room and give our, our non-spoiler impression of the movies. And, uh, John, since this was your, your pick, you can go first. 
I, well, yeah, like I said, I really liked it. It, it, it had just enough of the nostalgia, um, edge to it and you brought back, you know, as much of the cast as they could with a few strange exceptions. And then, uh, it, the, the addition of the daughters, uh, Billy and, and uh, Thea, they, it, it worked great. I, I think, um, I think it was a perfect way to cap the series. Cool. It was, it, it was fun too. The whole, the whole thing. There, there was a little bit of an ebb and flow, but otherwise it, it, it's exactly what you would have thought if you had seen the first two movies. So, um, you were not, you wouldn't be disappointed. Yeah. Okay. JD. It was a most triumphant sequel. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about the original Bill and Ted is like how the characters are so earnest. Like, especially from 1987, I think is when the script was written. Like, it's very different than a lot of the teen comedies coming out of the 1980s. Like the Bill Bio and Ted. Dome. <laughs> that's actually later. Um, that actually was ripped off from Bill and Ted. But I mean, like the stuff before, like Fast Times and all that stuff, like what was working. And then this movie comes along and it's just so, like the first one, it's innocent. There's like a, there's an earnestness to it. And there's nothing, there's nothing sardonic or sarcastic about it. It's very fun and light. And they really channeled that tone here again. And it's, it's a hard thing to do. And it's, and it comes off and, and Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves still have that same earnestness to them in their performance. That, that, isn't it? It's, it's a shame that Alex Winter didn't have more of a career. Like, I, I think he's, he's a pretty good actor. I don't he's, understand, you know, I mean, Keanu Reeves is kind of a wooden board. Uh, like he's got a He's got, he's got a very short range. Um, Alex Winter's got a career behind the camera. He's a director. Yeah, he could have been in front. Of, he could have been in front of the camera, though. He's he's still Some a great actor. Some guys don't want to be in front of the camera. Some guys are much more comfortable behind it. Mm. So, Dave, what did you think? I am going to say that this might not be the movie that we wanted right now, but it's the movie we <laughs> oh, no. needed. Come on, very on brand of the yeah. show. Yeah, very. On brand. I agree with that. I agree with that sentiment. 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 Sent. Sentiment. Um, I agree with your theory. Um, there was, there has been a criticism I've heard of this movie, and I kind of agree with it. What's the criticism? That if you haven't seen the first two and you're not a fan of the first two, you're really not going to get this movie. That's and it's perfectly prob- fine. It's part three. Yeah. Exactly. I was going to say, but yeah. it's part three, so I, it's fine, right? So it's a, it's a thirty year after the initial movie sequel. Like, <laughs> exactly. Like you are, you are not the target audience. So, so with all that being said, I, again, I, obviously we're all giving it a thumbs up or recommendation here. So we're going to get into spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie and you don't want to be spoiled, uh, you can stop listening to the podcast now and come back later. Um, because at this point you've listened to it long enough to count as a download. Um, but if you don't, if you don't care about being spoiled, well then here we go. All right. Um, so, so let's start off with, uh, what is something that you really liked in this movie? Uh, JD, you go first. I like the relationship between Bill and Ted and Billy and Thea. Yeah. Like, I like, I like the, it's so easy to write kids, it's a cliche to write kids and I'm guilty of it too, write kids and parents with issues because it's real. We don't see enough, especially when it comes to teenagers, parents and kids just who like each other. You know, and it was very heartwarming to see that these girls were literally traveling time to save their dads because they still believed in them. And that just, you know, and then at the very end, when the when Bill and Ted say, we got your back. And I just I got choked up, you know, being a parent now. It just that's what being a parent's all about. It just it just the the relationship between the two sets of parents, uh, the set of parent and daughter. Like, I loved it. No, I agree. I mean, it's you don't. Yeah, you definitely don't get enough positive parent-child relationships in movies nowadays. It's not, it's not fun to write about, you know? Like, yeah. you drama is what we see. But, I mean, like I said, there's just – there's an earnestness to all four characters that makes them really likable. And um, you want to root for them the whole time. Cool. John? Well, I'll add to JD what JD said. Um, the, the thing about – like. Normally in a movie like this, you'd see there'd be like a rift between them and the daughters and they have to make up. And it's usually used as a cheap plot. Um, but 
it it was it was good to see that uh, an actual depiction of parents that got along with their kids and the kids were intelligent and the the deep 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 cuts uh, uh, sure. uh music cuts for these these that these kids were just throwing you know throwing off like nothing they're definitely and, smarter than their dads like, yes and it's yeah but it's not like it's not played like they're embarrassed about their dads being kind of dumb like and their dads were, were their dads were proud of them yes you know not threatened which yeah. you know again like that would you usually be used as a as a cheap plot device right. um so yeah I, th- that the fact that the, the they were still together with their wives you know and none of their wives were you know dead or you know left mm-hmm. or whatever that's also really nice yeah it's it's so it's so rare these days for that not to be used to, as cheap even even though they they did um replace the wives was it Elizabeth was a played by Annette um oh my god so, yeah, here's here's as Kuya and she was now played by Aaron Hayes and then Joanna was played by Sarah Trigger originally now she's played by uh Jim so, Mays and they, it's kind of it's well one thing it's kind of funny that they picked women to play the mothers who couldn't possibly be mothers to the ages of the daughters right right <laughs> so yes. they picked women like a little bit young older than me I I, I I agree with that but at the same time um, someone had pointed out that the princesses had been different in every movie. True. So that's oh, the, so they, they think were, that that's probably a running gag that they get recast every time. So they were different in the uh, they were different in Bogus Journey than they were in Excellent Adventure. Yes. I don't I don't remember that. Yeah, they're different. I believe it. I believe I, yeah. So so I was like, oh, okay. So it's probably like an inside running gag for them. So. Except that Missy, Missy stayed the same. Yes, I saw Tur- that. Turning to turning to the the father and saying, "Hey, you're you are now your own son." <laughs> well, of course. That, and then there's the other guy. running gag from the the first two movies. Yes. Yeah, and 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 you're right. Princess Joanna was played by Diane Franklin in the first movie, and and also in the first movie was Kimberlyn Cates. Yes, Kimberly. Cates. So yeah, it's they've been recast each freaking time. Do um, you know that Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter did the voices of Bill and Ted in the first season of the cartoon show? That figures. That's pretty cool, I think, because that and 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 Carlin too. They were all in that first season. Hmm. You know, you know, what I really, um, I really enjoyed was uh, William Sadler as Death. He's great in everything. Still, still with the weird accent that he picked for Death. Yes, isn't it strange that he's basically playing Bergmar's Death, right, from the Seven Seals? Plays him with like a set with like a Czechoslovakian accent. Yep. As opposed to Swedish. (laughs) Yep. Um, but, but yeah, again, it's like um, they, they they revisited death. They revisit. They had to go back and revisit death, which you know kind of worked out. Um, it was, I mean, it was nice to see him again and bring him back in. He wasn't in it for much, but mm-hmm. uh, they they were hitting. They were kind. They were kind of. They kind of took the first two movies and melded them together, and yes. they were. It was a capstone for the series. Um, because the difference between the first movie and the second movie, um, Excellent Adventure and Bogus Journey, like Bogus Journey is probably one of the most interesting and better uh, um, sequels ever to be made. Because it, mm. stop it. Be- because because it was so different, they could have just done the same thing over again. And they True. they they reached out there and they, I mean, the visuals themselves were really really interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, this, this, this worked out really good. And I, I, I really liked it. It, it like everybody said, uh, the end kind of came up abruptly, but, uh, it was, it was still satisfying. And I laughed. There were a couple of places where I laughed really hard. And one of the things I loved the most was how they depicted the, um, the musicians when, yeah. when Jimi Hendrix, yeah, they don't bother going up to Mozart and, you know, introducing. They're just Jimi Hendrix talking to him through the music. And right. that that was Lang- beautiful. Language and music, man. It worked yes. really good. I think they actually do a better job in this one introducing the uh, historical characters than they do in Bill and uh, Excellent Adventure. Like yeah. there's more of a purpose for all those characters. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. and and each time they introduced each other, yeah, the musicians basically said, no, 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 we got this, and they introduced themselves to the next to the next person, and, and you know, and it was it was like an immediate bonding with the music, which 
it's almost like, you know, it's it's like you would wish it would happen. Like if you could take a time machine and bring back Jimi Hendrix to talk to Mozart or um, I forget what the first one's name was. Um, Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. Right. If you could bring Louis Armstrong to talk to, to Jimi Hendrix, it'd be like that. That would be the way it would play out. Right. I, I like, like yeah, yeah, sure. You're good. <laughs> I like when they tried to talk to each other. Louis Armstrong and Jimi Hendrix, it wasn't working. That it wasn't until Louis takes out the trumpet. Yep. And it was like, oh, and then it makes sense. And then that becomes how they do it from then on, is that you just let the music talk. Yeah. Which is the perfect, that's a perfect motif theme for, for these movies, is yes. just letting the music talk. Mm-hmm. Same writers, by the way. Same creative team. Yep. So, um, so, so I think the thing I liked most about this movie I'm going to say it's it's three names. I'm going to say he's probably the greatest character in film of 2020. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Dennis oh, no. Callum <laughs> McCoy, the android, made this movie beyond funny. I'm, I don't know what it is. The idea of a robot with a soul just made me laugh so hard it wasn't even funny. This We've seen the mage. We've seen the neurotic robot a, a lot. It's nothing new, but for some reason, it worked great in this movie. It really did. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis, my name, my name is Dennis. <laughs> mistakes were made. I just that was. <laughs> That's right. Mistakes that were made. Oh my god! It's just <laughs> who knew a robot could go to hell? <laughs> <laughs> I even that like even Bill and Ted are just like, and for some reason the robots and. <laughs> You know, like they were even like, why is he here? You know? Yeah. Well, even when they passed two guys down in in hell, the two guys were talking. Yeah. Was, oh, oh, look, a robot for some reason. It's like yeah. those, <laughs> those were the writers. Yeah. I mean, it's just awesome. No, like, for real, those were the writers. They played the two demons. Yeah. Uh, I, okay, that makes sense. It's awesome. Oh my god, I just I loved it. It was it it made me chuckle. Um, I was gonna say something too. Like I thought, and I think I said this when they announced the movie that I was afraid the shtick of uh, the two idiots wasn't going to work with, you know, 50-year-old actors, um, you know, Keno and Alex tr- trying to act like teenagers again. And it's, f- but it goes back to what you said, JD. It works because the characters are earnest. It's not, it's not so much that they're, they're dumb kids is that they're just, they're driven by their music and this purpose that they have. You know, so they gave a reason of why they, you know, are still kind of where they're at emotionally when you get to the, this movie, you know, and it like to me that worked. It so. does. They're not like like Lloyd and uh, Harry from Dumb and Dumber, right. right, where their stupidity defines their characters like Bill and Ted's always been them. Bill and Ted's heart defines them. Right. Mm. And like they still have that heart, but they're going through that. Ooh, I don't know if you call it a midlife crisis at this point and, and using <laughs> Like, it's such a great little metaphor, too, for getting older. And, like, man, I was supposed, we were supposed to be something. What happened? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's a great, it's very, it's an easy story to see how it gets written, but they just, they avoided all the tropes and cliches that you think would come with this story. I think, I think the best part at the end, uh, it's just, it, I don't know why it spoke volumes to me, where Ted's talking to Ted, right? And he's like, (laughs) I, I don't feel like I know you. I don't think I like I forgot to know you. And he's like, well, that's because you always reminded me of myself. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, my God. Like, that makes- a lot of, it's it's poignant. It sounds funny when you say it. But then when you think about it, like, there's a lot of poignancy in that. Yes, exactly. It's like, oh, my God, that that makes so much sense to me. It's weird. It's weird that I'm laughing at this and crying at the same time. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah no, it's true. And and you you really see the talent of Keanu. And this is why these two worked so well in this. Is because I think in lesser hands, this could have just been like dumb stoner type humor. Right. But they were able to transcend that. And, like, you just really like these characters. They're so likable. Well, that's that's the that's the thing. If you can give characters heart, like make people care about them, you're. I mean, I, that it's so it's hard. It's much harder to do apparently than than anyone seems to think. And you know, again, like you said, is they they didn't just write. They weren't just they, these these writers were not writing this to be a stupid. They they weren't like just doing another stupid. 
teen comedy. Um, they, they put heart in it. And that's the reason why this got a third, uh, or a second, um, uh, a second sequel and why it lasted 30 years because people, you know, even, even now you go back and rewatch the first two and they're still good, you know? Right. So, so now that we've said what we really liked about the movie, is there anything that you didn't like or that you would have changed about the movie? Um, and we'll start with John this time. I would have liked to see more of what happened with the wives as they were traveling through time. Um, yeah, that's a different uh, movie. I, yeah. I, I, I know if they, I mean, Hey, you know, if they want to make that movie, fine. Um, because that I think would have been pretty interesting too. Um, and otherwise I don't, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I, I would have, I would have unleashed, uh, Christian Shaw though. Like she can be hysterical just reading a phone book. So, um, they, it, I, they, they did not use her to her greatest capacity. They could have done a lot more with her. I think, I mean, I, I don't know. Everything else was, I, I, I wouldn't want to second guess the writers on this because, um, they, they did a really good job. Uh, the only thing I could say is make it longer and, and add more, more to it. Give them more, more time. Uh, Cause I, I think they were under, under the gun on this, maybe. Maybe. Uh, I mean, they did a lot of green screen and all that, um, which kind of says to me, like, they, I almost, it almost looks like they had a larger budget on Bogus Journey than they had on this one. Yeah, mine. Uh, so, which, you know, given the time well, this, difference. Alex Winter has been talking for years about making this movie. So that's the whole thing. I, I don't know if the studios were behind it for a while. Oh, yeah. they definitely yeah. were. Yeah, they definitely were. Yeah. So I'd like to hear that story too. I mean, otherwise, yeah, um, it was, I, I don't know. I don't know much that how much else I would change about it. What about you, JD? It's hard to, to, to take the critical eye to a movie that doesn't, that intentionally goes out of its way not to take itself seriously. Mm. Right. Like it's, it's a movie that like when you, when you take a critical eye to it, you're going to tear it apart. But I mean, like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like it's a movie that's really more about emotion right and thought and then it's really more about feel than, than than thought which is what i've always liked about it so i'm not gonna i'm with you i don't want to i don't want to criticize it because it defeats the purpose of what it's supposed to be one thing that i do wish it had is i wish carlin was still around oh yeah, yeah. i wish we could have seen george carlin one more time yeah well we don't no. we don't Can actually have a time machine so Given yeah. some of his commentary, we wish he was here for a lot of other. I know, and that's kind of what I mean. That's kind of what I mean by it. I think this is an era that could have used his wit and his bite and his satire and like, you know, and this just seeing this project that was really kind of what his comeback was. Like, because George Carlin, it kind of faded from obscurity a little bit, and Bill and Ted is really what gave his career the second breath of life when he went from you know kind of being the hippy dippy guy to that you know uh, you know modern day Diogenes. You know, that started with Bill and Ted. So, I mean, like, you know, it's not possible he's been gone for, like, I think 12 years now. But, I mean, like, it would be nice to, it would have been nice to see him. You know, made me miss, made me miss him. Yeah. Yeah, especially when they, you you did get a, a very quick, I, I don't know, was that, would, did they just dub something from what yeah, he'd done before? It was yeah, just a yeah, clip yeah. from the first movie. Yeah. Okay. So. Um. All right. Well, it's funny because, and this isn't. This really isn't criticism. It's just little tweak ideas I had. Um, cause I'd really thought about this movie after I watched it. And, uh, and I listened to a couple other shows talk about it. And, um, uh, one of the things that kind of, I, I, I did agree with someone had criticized and they, I wish they had developed the daughters a little bit more. That goes back to me wanting to have them to have more time, like actually yeah, making the movie longer. But it's not their story. It's not Billy and I get, Fia, I get and that, Ted. but I just kind of feel like they should have, I don't know, I wish they could have developed a little more. And then I had two little tweaks that would not have changed much in the movie, but I kind of feel like, I, to me, it would have made the movie better. Um, the first one was, I was thinking, they kept talking about their drive and wanting to to create the song that united mankind, blah, 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 blah. I kind of wanted that to be the reason death left the band, you know, not, not he wanted to go off and have a solo career, but he got sick of their obsession, you know, like I thought that would have been a cool little like nod to, to that, you know, they set that up though in the first movie. Like that's actually a gag of the second movie. 
like when they do the 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 um the title the the credits like they have all the move the magazine covers oh that's true and they true. literally have death going off and doing a solo project that death left the band right but that's you know in, that's in the credits like they don't you know it is but it's it's part of the continuity if you will but they can but they don't give you the reason in the credits that could have been the reason that I'm he sure. went off to have a solo career and then the other one was and it would have to me would have had it the whole thing make a lot more sense in the end is, you want a bill and ted show to make more sense okay Yes, and I get it. I get it. It's a comedy. It's not supposed to take itself seriously. But what if, what it would have been a fun thing to tie the whole thing together is what was causing the, the time to fold into itself was Rufus going and traveling back in time in the first place and kicking the whole thing off. And then their adventures through time is what messed everything up. Mm. You know, so then, cause there's no explanation for why this is going on. Like I, to sort of, you know, you're taking the movie and just taking it a an, half a step further and giving an explanation of the whole thing. And then that's what makes it a good cap at the end, you know, because let's be honest, the ending is telegraphed a mile away. You know, like I, I saw it coming within the first 10 minutes of the movie, like, oh, it's going to be the daughters. You oh, know? Of course. But like, I think it would have been like, oh, well, then that makes it all work out, you know, so. Well, the daughters just. Basically, they became instant producers, but given the deep cuts they were doing before and their, their, the, the amazing breadth of their knowledge, um, that kind of made sense at the end, you know? Right, right. But I said, like, and if you just tie it into, like, oh, well, this was all caused by Bill and Ted anyway, just no one realized it until now, you know? I was like, oh, that, that would have been cool. I don't know. It would have brought anything. It's, yeah, I mean, I, I, don't know. I mean, I'm the one who's usually, arguing for uh you know continuity but mm, i don't know it's 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 mcguffin mcguffin you know uh i don't hate it i mean i I, it would have been all right um i don't know if i lose anything on it but yeah it would have been fine it would have made sense damn that's it i'm starting a campaign for the for a new cut (laughs) all you need is all you need is twenty thousand maniacs to Put a hashtag on everything and abuse people's social media accounts, and you got something. There you go. Woohoo! Oh wait, sorry. Uh, and then it'll be on HBO Max. Sure. Okay. They need content. They need content. Yes. Uh. uh all right. All right. Uh, but I mean, other than that, I don't think there's anything that I didn't like in the movie. Like, there's nothing. You know. Okay. No, there is something I didn't like. I do have a complaint. I do have an actual, honest complaint about this movie. Go for it. If you're going to have Dave Grohl in your movie, have him in it more than three <laughs> seconds. <laughs> hey, Dave Grohl. I love that part. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, what are you guys Dave doing to my house? He, Dave Grohl does that, though. He just shows – he does randomly show up in things just for like a second. Uh, I don't know. I, yeah. I like the use of Kid Cudi. That was – I didn't know who the hell he was. Yeah, I don't know who he is either. He's a rapper. Okay. He's a rapper and like having him be like, um, it's not an original thing to do. Take a character like that, you know, and, and make them be like the, uh, the narrator voice, if you will. Uh huh. But I think that Kid Cudi actually did a really good job playing that type of character. So he, he amused me. See, I thought he was an actor. No, he's an actual rapper. So, so there you go. So they, but that's what I'm saying. Like he did a good job because I thought he was an actor, not, yeah, not a, a, a rapper. So. Honestly, I hope he gets to do some more stuff. I kind of want to see him in more things. He was pretty good. All right then. So it was so, a good movie, man. It was a really. I'm glad we chose this one. Yes, we need more good uh, movies to to watch. Yeah, stuff that's upbeat. So, um, uh, well, we, we what what dark and and sinister thing do you want to do next week? <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll we'll figure that Sac- out soon. And sacrifice a goat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So. Let's I was the, thinking more along the lines of watching Homelander slaughter on, innocents, but you know, I, 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 no, I hated that comic. So I mean, I didn't even watch season one, so I'm not. So 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 insane. so let's wrap this review up. Like we all, it's a movie review, guys. We got to do it official. We got to go around the room, give it a rating, uh, uh, one to to ten excellence, uh, one being the worst, ten being the best, and final thoughts. Uh, 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 JD, you can go first. Mm. This is a this is a movie that you know it doesn't work if you haven't seen the originals. I watched it with my wife. She did not 
like the original Bill and Ted movies all that much. So she came out going, eh, I don't, it didn't do much for her. But I think that if you have an appreciation for those movies from your youth, seeing this will, will do what it's supposed to. It'll give you just enough nostalgia while tricking you into watching a movie about growing up and being a parent hmm. that you'll enjoy your time. So for that alone, for taking what should have been, for taking what should have been a quick cash grab and providing an actual story and making it just as warm and heartfelt as the original, it gets 10 air guitar solos. Whoa. Whoa. Excellent. They did what it's supposed to. It was then nice. It's like spaghetti. It's comfort. John. Uh, yeah. Again, as JD said, something that, that could have been just a, Hey, you know, everything's streaming. Let's do a quick Bill and Ted grab, grab some cash and, and, and run with it. Um, at 20 bucks a pop. Um, and uh, bringing the original writers back, bringing most of the, most of the original crew back, the, the cast and everybody. And for Alex Winter and, and, uh, Keanu Reeves just dropping into their characters like they never left. And for, um, for Bridget Lundy Payne and some, uh, Samara Weaving to drop into the characters like they've been doing They've been cosplaying Bill and Ted their entire lives. Um, I mean, it, this this is if you liked the first two movies, um, then this is more than welcome. And it, it's a really nice watch. It's well worth the 20 bucks. Uh, you know, my cats enjoyed it. And uh, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll give it uh, I'll give it 10 bagpipes. Wow. Um, all right. I, I, I totally concur with the, uh, what you guys said there that, um, and yes, I don't think if you, like we said in the beginning, if you haven't seen the first two, this doesn't work. If you're not a fan of the first two, you're not going to like this. Um, though it isn't a cash grab. Uh, a lot of times with movies like this, they kind of just rehash the original movie, uh, change a couple of the jokes around and, you know, slap a, fresh coat of paint on it like they did not do this it's a completely unique story uh within the bill and ted universe um great cast uh you know very well done uh i am not gonna give it a perfect 10 i'm sorry guys i like the movie i just <laughs> it's not a perfect 10 movie to me i will give it uh eight time traveling phone booths um but yes so so i guess we're all agreed here thumbs up Go see this movie. Spend the 20 bucks. I spent the 25 so I could own it on Amazon Prime so I can watch it again whenever I want. You did um, the 20, as Michelle said. You're not, we're not going to watch this again. <laughs> so we did the rent. I might, it, it, when it comes out on uh, Blu-ray, I might like, they'll probably, they'll probably do a, a trilogy Blu-ray and I'll, I'll get that. That'd be cool owned actually. Well, it, yeah. what I, what, what really ticked me off is I heard on Vudu the, the last weekend, you know, the weekend it came out. Uh, if you spent thirty five, you got all three movies to own. Oh, that would have been cool. Well, I, but that's that that's on video, right? Not like not that's on not video. that's yeah. not physical. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't like to own physical media anymore. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> I heard that in my head. Damn it! Stop it, you. <laughs> all right. Um, do you guys have any recommendations for our audience, JD? I just started reading The Institute by Stephen King. I'm about a fifth of the way through it. Um, it's pretty dang good. It's about a, about a kid who, um, is a child prodigy. He's ready to, he's 12 and he's about to go to MIT. And like a couple nights before he leaves, his parents are murdered and he's kidnapped by a secret underground institution that is capturing telepaths and telekinetics. Ooh. And he's a telekinetic. And that's all I've gotten to so far. What's so the name of this again? The Institute by Stephen King. That sounds a lot like an Alexander Key book from a long time ago called The Case of the Vanishing Boy. I'll take your word for it. I've never read that, nor have I heard of it. I mean, it's like um, it's very much Stephen King's story. It's dealing with a, a kid with telekinesis, which, uh, you know, is most of his stories. Like everyone's got some type of shine, if you will. Mm. Uh, but so far, so good. I'm, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying what I'm reading. Do you think that Stephen King has that power and that's why he keeps writing about it? No, but I think he'd like to. Oh, oh, okay. John? Uh, I am watching season five of Lucifer and on Netflix, and it is well worth it. And 
Um, even though this was supposed to be the final season, I'm hearing now that they are clamoring for a sixth season, which just tickles me to no end. Um, it's I'm three episodes into it, and it's just as good as it's always been. So, you know, if you're bored and you're and you're you're like locked up in your house and you need something else to to stream to pass the time, um, you know, I'd say go through all five seasons are on Netflix. It should take you a while to get through them and it's well worth it. Shouldn't a show about the devil have six seasons? Yeah, it just seems more fitting. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they really re- that the problem is that they really thought that this was going to be the last season because Netflix because Netflix usually kills things after two seasons. Yeah, it's two. They get everything gets about two seasons. Right. And so they had see they they brought it back for season four and then season five. And they the the la- the I mean, the uh, the name of the last episode of season five, I think, is something like the the final battle between, you know, with with dad and um and and now there's going to be a season six i have no idea what they're going to do but the cast is all there and it, they're awesome so yeah cool they, all yeah. right i will recommend that everyone go to superhero where you can find the podcast every week plus comic book reviews by our good friend d square um i actually have all honestly two recommendations this week uh number one like john I, I think people should go watch season two of The Boys, uh, out now. I, I'm, I, and I'm pissed that I have to watch it weekly, but, uh, they're definitely, uh, turning the gears up, uh, this season. Um, and so I had told, I had teased at the beginning of the episode that I was watching something for another podcast. So, oh, yeah, yeah. um, everyone should be listening to, of course, all the podcasts in the Geek World All Stars Podcast Network, but sure. this week, um, I will be a guest on Fans on Patrol. They nice. are they do uh, um, two shows a week right now. They do their regular news show, and then they do an episode where they review classic movies because obviously nothing's going on in the the movie theaters. Um, so they were doing that for the summer where people couldn't go to the movies. And we will be talking about 1979's Superman the movie. Superman the movie came out in 79. It was 78. 78. 78. I'm 78. sorry. 1978. Oh, forgive me. I was a year yeah. off. Um, it was wrong. Were you, right? you were talking about the Roger Corman Superman, right? <laughs> <laughs> I would um, like to see that movie. <laughs> no. No. Um, here's the interesting thing about it. I hadn't watched the movie in a long time. I was like, oh, it's got to be somewhere to watch, right? The only place you can watch for free right now is HBO Max. I wasn't going to get HBO Max just to watch this. So I was like, all right, fine. I had a Amazon gift card. I'm like, it's 10 bucks on Amazon. I'll just buy it, right? What I didn't realize is I bought the 2001 Special Edition. Have either of you seen the Special Edition? I think I own the Special Edition, but, like, so, go on. So there are, like, added scenes that were cut from the theatrical version that are in the Special Edition. And I'm like, it blew my mind. That what scenes? Because I'm like, cause this might be the only way I've watched the movie in the last twenty years, so I don't know what I've, I don't know what I'm not supposed to be having seen. Uh, the gauntlet scene underground, because that was cut from the original theatrical version. Oh, oh, oh yeah, where where he was frozen in ice and then he was hit with fire and, and all that. And, and yeah, the and, and they cut. Yeah, and they they cut that they cut that out from the original release. I remember I remember thinking, you know, where the hell is that when I when I actually got the original um, God when I got it on VHS. The, uh, the, um, after the montage where he's like first introduces himself and he saves the kitty from the tree and he stops the jewelry thief and he saves Air Force One, right? And the boat. And the boat, right. But after that, there's a scene in the Fortress of Solitude where he's talking to Jorel about coming out to the people. Oh, you know, I've never seen this. Okay. And it was like, and it, it's, it's actually a really good scene, and I'm like, why was this cut? It makes it it, it talks more to the character um, in the movie, you know, and who Kal El. The it talks about the like I, people say the duality, but it's the triality of Kal El versus Clark Kent versus Clark Kent Superman. Versus Super, yeah, that's true. People don't respect enough that there's three different guys going on in there. Right, right, and it, it, so yeah, it's a really good scene. And then there's a scene. Oh my goodness. Something that's always bothered me about the movie is that Lex just had kryptonite. Yeah. Go on. 
there's a scene where they show him deducing about kryptonite, where to get it. And I then, remember that. And then they explain that uh, there's another scene explaining like there was a robbery at a museum where the kryptonite was stolen. Like I remember that. Like yeah. like I don't I never remember seeing that scene before, and it was like oh my goodness, like wow, like it changes the movie. And I just ruined it for everyone, but if you haven't seen it, I recommend getting the special edition. Um, now, now I will warn you that, uh, there is, like, uh, Richard Donner wasn't 100% happy with it when they released it. And one of the reasons is he had cut some of the scenes because they were too long and they kind of left the longer versions in to make this movie longer. And yeah, there are some scenes that go on too long, like the destruction of Krypton. They made that longer? Yes. And that's awesome though and it's just like so no 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 because after a couple minutes I'm all right this is enough like like just blow up already we know where this like, is going it's like 20 minutes in the real version in the, in the original version and then uh um yeah there's just and then the, the earthquake scene is longer there's more stuff that goes on in that so yeah it's it's interesting um so yeah so 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 yeah i mean if you haven't seen it i recommend it it's interesting um just because you've i've I've heard of some of these scenes before, but never saw them, you know, in the, in the fandom, they talk about the scenes that were cut from the, the original version. And then it's like, Oh wow, this is cool. All right. I think on that note, boys and girls, uh, we'll call it a, a week. So as always, thanks for listening and be excellent hmm. and party on. Party on dudes. <laughs>